Thanks everyone for coming today. I'd like to start by acknowledging that the land on which we meet is the treaty lands of the Mississaugas of the First Nation, by the Credit First Nation, the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee people. Today I'm joined by renters from my riding who've experienced firsthand how our broken rental system is, forcing people out of their homes and making them, getting them pushed around. I'm joined by Carolina Crook and Leonard Chushan. Thank you for coming. We're, call, we're here today to call on the government to stop stalling and take action to protect Ontario renters from skyrocketing rents, from illegal evictions, and the disappearance of our affordable rental stock. The government has a chance today to protect renters by passing my bill, the Keeping People Housed Act. A chance to keep people like the ones joining me today on stage from having to navigate years-long LTB wait times, harassment from bad-acting landlords, and the mental and physical health impacts of being forced out of their homes in the name of sky-high profits. I'd like to invite each of them to share a bit about their experience fighting illegal evictions and why they want the Ford government to take action today to stop this troubling pattern. I'd like to introduce, uh, to bring Carolina to the stage to share a little bit about her experience. Hi there. Um, so I have been bullied out of my apartment, been threatened the, by the police if I don't leave. Um, without any notice, no N13. Uh, I had to deny them entry because they didn't tell me what was happening. So they tried to charge me $250 for not letting them in. They locked me out of my apartment. They didn't want to pay for an extension for an Airbnb, so I was on my hallway for 14 hours with my three cats and all my stuff. Um, they didn't want to let me in. Uh, there was no help from anyone. The police was overworked, so no one was able to come. I had to miss Christmas and New Year's with my family. I was stuck without a washroom for four months because they got in my washroom. They didn't want to fix it. Um, They cut off a lot of our amenities in the building. We had no mail for nine months now. It takes me four hours to pick up my mail. They shut down our laundry. Um, meanwhile, they're trying to increase the rents. And now our heat was being turned off completely during the winter. So we had a flooding. It took them eight hours to come in to fix it. Um, they accused me of operating a drug ring out of my apartment trying to have a petition to have me removed from my place. I had to miss over 50 health appointments because of that. Um, my cat is now sick for life. I have to buy every month medication until he's alive because of the situation, all the stress. And they keep trying to evict me. The landlord tenant board already ordered them to give me keys to the lobby because they actually changed the keys to the keys, the locks to the lobby. So no one was able to get in. I had five tenants constantly calling me to try and let them in. I, and I still don't have the keys. Um, the order was out there, but there was absolutely no consequence if they don't follow through. So, so I'm stuck. I'm stuck in this uh, situation right now, so I am absolutely 100% for this bill to go through because it's been it's been hell. It's been hell. And why do you think they're doing that? <sighs> to raise the rents. It's not just me. My neighbor was going through it. She had to break a leg during this whole situation. She's also going through this. Um, I just believe they just want to, you know, renovate the place, raise the rents. I don't. It's hard to say, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Next, I'd like to introduce Leonard. Come, Leonard, and share a little bit. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Leonard Shushan. I'm a senior citizen on fixed income. So my ordeal uh, first started in 2019 when I requested from my landlord that he uh, do some minor repairs. He did get back to me. He said that... Uh, he did my repairs, but I have to move out for six months and that I'd be losing half of my bedroom. Uh, <laughs> he then issued a, a bogus N13, followed by an actual N13, 
and he's lost the N13, lost multiple appeals. And this has just been going on. I've had my the locks changed on my apartment. I've been uh, locked out of my bathroom. Uh, he boarded up the bathroom for several months. I've had no heat for one year. Um, this is just an ongoing or ordeal. The only constant that I know is that uh, every six months, I'll probably find myself in front of the landlord tenant board having to deal with this crap. <laughs> the, uh, the sad part is that where I live now, when I moved there um, in 2007, it wasn't really considered desirable, I guess. Lack of amenities. But now with the GO train about th three minutes away, it's very desirable. And uh, so consequently, he could easily get $2,000 a month rent, which is a lot more than I'm paying now. So this is all about money. It's about, for people that don't have the money, like as a senior citizen on a fixed income, there's no way that I can afford $2,000 a month. The government, all levels of government, have to work with nonprofits and private sectors and with their colleagues across the aisle to bring solutions so that me as a senior citizen doesn't end up spending my golden years in a tent <laughs> in a park somewhere. So this is serious, and I hope that you take action. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much. Well done. Thank you so much. It takes a lot of courage to come and speak today, and I know that they are sharing stories that are echoed by so many who aren't able to share their stories or who have left because they can't endure this fight with the LTB or the stress of worrying you're going to lose your home. So while the Ford government claims to strengthen penalties for bad actors who take advantage of the gaps in our rental system, we know it's not working. Only four landlords have paid on average of $5,000 in the past three years. So the experience of these folks and the data tell a very different story. My bill, the Keeping People Housed Act, would strengthen tenant protections and protect affordable housing stock. By reinstating rent control and vacancy control, cracking down on bad faith evictions, and protecting our existing stock. Because we know that once we lose an affordable unit, it takes years to get back. This government, if they truly cared about taking action on affordability and the housing crisis, they should support this bill and work to protect renters to be sure that they have a safe and affordable place to call home. I'm happy to answer any questions. So the issue you guys are having is that the landlord tenant board decisions are not being enforced. Like what is what do you see as like the central problem with well, what you're having in your experiences? Is, uh, you might want to come to the I'm sorry. Moment. Yeah. No, uh, from my understanding is, uh, I'll let Leonard speak, well, but for myself, they can keep at it, right? For myself, it, it's, it's, uh, it comes down to market forces, right? He can get so much more. And uh, so we, we've gone through like, I've been through the LTB about 10 times. Uh, and you know, I've, I've had my heat cut off for a year. I've had the locks changed. Um, and you've gone to bylaw too, right? I've gone the to lock. bylaw. Um, they've been helpful in some cases. They have had this. They have these weird rules in bylaw where he, they do have to provide heat. Initially, they didn't want to take take up the cause, but then when they realized that they were in the wrong, they did take up the cause. When they did finally get heat, they have this, these weird laws. For example, um, he can't. He has to provide heat but doesn't have to provide heat in the bathroom. So <laughs> one day he comes through the, the back door and <laughs> he goes into my bathroom and I see him pulling out my radiator to remove it. So in the winter time, I have no heat in the bathroom. I mean, it's just silly, but it's it's something, right? Um, yeah, and I, I think too that, sorry, but these are scare tactics. So even uh, oftentimes one trip to LTB is enough to scare somebody out of their home, you know, and if they, if they win and they stay in their unit, it doesn't, there's nothing to prevent that landlord from going to the LTB again and again and again, because they know that it puts folks under a lot of stress, yeah. right? And it causes a lot of hardship and that's enough sometimes to push people out of their affordable rentals. I just want to say like initially, like, um, when, in 2019, I've been living there for uh, since 2007, so I've been living here for 12 years. 
So I thought everything was fine, right? And uh, when I finally realized um, what I was going through was happening, the stress caused me to have a heart attack. But uh, the old thing is what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, I guess. So <laughs> after, uh, by now it's, it's more of a process. I know that uh, he's going to come after me and then I'll go after him and, and we'll just play it out. But today I've spent about $14,000 uh, on paradigals and now I can't afford that anymore. So I'm on my, basically on my own. Uh, and I just know that uh, probably over the next six months I'll probably get called again to the LTB and have to defend myself. But that's that's my life <laughs> and we were, and this is why we need to do more to prevent these cases from coming to the LTB these bad faith rent evictions and eviction notices Ashton could you maybe uh, and apologies if I sound like a slow student here but can you give me a, a, a concrete sense of like your bill would do uh, I'm reading the text here that you, 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 you would, would modify the, the uh, uh, residential tenancies act and, and can you give me like a, a, a some specificity how it would help somebody in, the, in these kinds of situations, like how how that works mechanically? Wonderful. So I think I think they ran control. It's not related to these folks because they're in units that were built before 2018. But we've had a case in Kitchener where a Syrian family was paying 1,700, and then their rent was put up to 4,000 as a tactic to get them to move out. Um, the vacancy control. The reason why landlords uh, Leonard's landlord is harassing him is because he knows he can make a thousand dollars more a month. That's twelve thousand dollars a year. So it's worth it. I mean, if you just look at numbers for him to harass Leonard in the hopes that he'll move out and that's what vacancy control would remove is that you can only increase the amount of rent charged each month by a certain amount so it's not it's not uh, financially incentivizing this bad acting uh, with the rent eviction prevent prevention um, you know the law says you need paperwork to say that someone has to vacate their tenant their unit because their renovations are so extensive we know that people put n13s in willy-nilly it doesn't cost them anything so they would would rather use this as a scare tactic so that any vulnerable person, low income, seniors, people on ODSP will say, oh, I have to move out. Most folks don't know their rights. So we see widespread misuse. All that we're asking is put in a layer of protection so that those permit permits have to prove that someone has to vacate their residence. It's not just a coat of paint and a dishwasher or a, a new sink in your bathroom, that they have to prove that this is warranted. Um, the other layers are reg uh, rental registry. Most folks buildings these days are bought up by a number company they don't even know who their landlord is they don't know how to reach them and there's no data collection I mean in the city of Kitchener now they're doing a survey online on engaged WR trying to get folks vol uh, voluntarily to say they've been renovated we know this is an underrepresentation of what's really happening so like Hamilton where we have some sort of oversight uh, it, ho it brings in data it holds people accountable and make sure I, I can't count on one hand how many times as a city councilor People didn't know what number to call, who was their landlord. Um, and then the above guideline increases. We see time and time again, REITs especially aren't doing the maintenance on buildings. They're waiting until it comes into a state of disrepair. Then they go to the LTB and almost always they get their above guideline increase. So instead of raising their older units by 2%, they can say, oh, we need this massive uh, um, improvement on our HVAC or whatever. And so now everybody's rent has to go up far more. And so seniors have come to me um, and in droves saying if one more increase and I can't afford my place to live anymore. So we're just asking for a committee to look into this misuse of above guideline increases because, um, you know, they're neglecting buildings and then getting financially rewarded for pushing that, downloading that onto tenants. And municipalities are trying to fill in the gaps. Our federal government is trying to fill in the gaps, but we know the province needs to step up. The likelihood of this bill passing today is probably going to be close to zero. If the government doesn't pass it, like, what does it say to you guys as tenants? Well, um, speaking for myself, <laughs> it's kind of par for the course. I don't think, I don't know. I, I, the Ford government has a, a certain view from my perspective on housing uh, for someone in my situation. Uh, they do seem to support church groups uh, in their efforts to uh, to provide affordable housing, but they don't want to. They aren't dealing with dealing with it as a wholehearted effort with the federal government, to my understanding, or 
or they're not dealing with it with the uh, with the with the private sector, with the REITs, with the people who actually own the buildings. They are getting serious about it, and uh, I don't know what it's going to take. Um, you know, there's the old analogy of the uh, of the drip drip of water on the stone, and eventually the stone will break. But hopefully, it'll be faster than that. I don't know. <laughs> Carolina, do you want to share a little bit? Do you mind repeating the question? So, the chances of this bill passing today are not very good. Yeah. The government doesn't really pass uh, opposition legislation unless it's very, very innocuous. So, I'm just saying, asking, what would it say to you if the government decides to not pass uh, Ms. Clancy's bill today? What, how would that make you feel? Awful awful like the system has failed because how is it fair that we pay our rent and there are no consequences for the building for their actions and these actions are, are horrific they really are I mean it's been months and I cannot live my normal life right, life right now because all I have to focus on is keeping a roof over my head and why should I have to fight over a roof over my head if I already you know, I have, I pay my rent, I am a good tenant, so I I just, I would feel like that's a failure. And I think we've seen, just since putting the bill forward, we've seen the City of Toronto step forward with action, we've seen the federal government step forward from action, so we've seen, just like with the Green Belt, we need all hands on deck to show that this issue really matters. Our encampments keep growing and our homes keep becoming hotels and our hotels keep turning into homeless shelters. When is it enough? And I think every MPP, whether they vote for this or not, know that, knows that this is the reality in their ridings and it's eroding what I consider the morality of our province. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Thank you to both of you. Thank you. <laughs>